In this video, we're gonna take V-Man's 512 gigabyte image and show you how you can expand it onto a hard drive. So you can keep everything on that 512 gigabyte SD card or take some stuff off, but also add an external hard drive to add a bunch more PlayStation and Dreamcast games. So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and do a walkthrough on that, show you what it looks like after I've added the new PlayStation pack, and then also you can see the performance, how it all works, uh, DIY, what I think about it, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Setting up your hard drive is pretty easy. Hook it up to your computer, right click it, do format, go ahead and call it pi-ext-roms. Go ahead and format, quick format, and then just say complete, and then you can go ahead and remove it from your computer and plug it into your Raspberry Pi. All right, so I have my ethernet connected, or you can set up your Wi-Fi, and I'm gonna go ahead and run the VMAN post scripts. This is gonna go ahead and update to the latest scripts where he has added the USB extension. All right, that also reboots your Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and let it reboot and then we're gonna go back to the options menu. All right, so our hard drive's hooked up. We updated our post script, so we have the latest script for this um, you know, USB mode that we're gonna be doing, the USB expansion. Go ahead and go there. Options, emula um, emulation tools and then the, there's only one USB modes and then there, and then uh, we click the script and then it said disable or enable. We wanna go ahead and enable it. And right now it's running scripts. It's A, checking that there's a hard drive connected. Two, it's going to make sure it's NTS, NTFS formatted. If it's FAT32 or XFAT, it'll tell you and it'll just stop the script right there. Um, number three, it's gonna sync it up and then it's gonna start building in those file directories. And then lastly, it's gonna say thanks to Forrest at Easy Hacks and to Play for some tweaks. And uh, then you're all done. You wanna go ahead at this point, it should just turn off. Um, if it doesn't turn off, just wait a while, then power off your Pi. Then remove the hard drive from your Raspberry Pi USB slot and plug it back into a computer where you're gonna be transferring the ROMs. Another option though is you could just turn it back on and then do this all through the network as well. Just go up to your Windows Explorer, type it in and should automatically find it. There it is, my network. And um, so here's my SD card ROMs. And remember, I deleted all my PlayStation ROMs, so it's gonna, it's gonna have nothing in PSX right now. Just some video snaps. And all my ROMs are on my PlayStation. But remember, I'm still using my SD card. So while my, ROM, my PlayStation ROMs are there, but if I go to Nintendo 64, it's gonna be empty because I still have my Nintendo 64 on my SD card. So you see that, that I'm still using my micro SD card for majority of it. I've just now moved my PlayStation over. So do know though that you need to delete so far, people have had issues if you don't delete the ROMs out of the, out of the SD card then it gets a little funky. So it doesn't look like you can have like half your ROMs on the SD card and half of them on the hard drive. I think you have to go system by system. But again, don't quote me on that. They're still figuring that out. So your probably should be hooked up to your network this whole time. What I've done here is I'm on my network into my Pi right now, my Pi is on. And um, I wanna go ahead and delete the original PlayStation ROMs that came on the 512 gigabyte image. So on the left side there, you'll see you have two folders now, one ROMs SD and one ROMs uh, USB. The SD is your micro SD card, my 512 gigabyte SD card. So what I wanna do here is just control A and delete all the everything within the PlayStation folder. So that way I can just move it all to the hard drive and free up some space on my micro SD card. All right, so I recently downloaded his ROMs pack. Here's my hard drive on the left. There's PlayStation ROMs, they're all in there. The artwork's in there. There's a README in here, <laughs> okay, <laughs> promoting his forum. And um, so what we wanna do is just copy all that. We actually want the whole PSX folder to be in our ROMs folder. So here's our recently um, attached to our Pi, but we've removed it. It has the right scripts installed on it. And okay, it, it actually gets the entire file system for you. So here's all the different systems for Raspberry Pi. So we could do two things. We could just drop the whole PSX folder in here, or you can, you know, open up the PSX folder in here and then go ahead and, you know, control A, control C to, to grab them all and then control V, or you can just drag the whole folder over. 
And then this is gonna take some time. This is USB 3.0, so you know it'll get rock and rolling around 1:30. Yeah. Um, so 45 minutes for this. So I'm just gonna let this transfer all the way. When it's done transferring, all you gotta do is you know dismount your hard drive from your computer and add it to your Raspberry Pi. Boot. Make sure your Raspberry Pi is off when you add the hard drive. Boot up your Raspberry Pi, and then we'll see what happens. All right, so I now have 800 games. I'm just going to scroll through the game collection for you. All the video snaps, all the metadata, all the artwork working just great. I have to say that I had to attempt this twice, if just to be honest. The first time I didn't delete the ROMs from the SD card, and there were some conflicting things there. Um, but even on that same attempt, I ran into some other issues. I was just playing around. So make sure you follow my steps exactly where, you know, you start with the blank hard drive. You make sure you delete the ROMs before. You might be able to find success other ways, but this is what worked for me. And I'm sure that the script may be updated or people might find better ways to do it uh, after the fact. Now, um, it's great. And I was a little concerned that the PlayStation games wouldn't boot up or the video snaps wouldn't show up as fast as an emulation station being on a USB 3.0 hard drive versus on a micro SD card. And it's marginally noticeable. Um, very, very unnoticeable. I even went back and forth. I think I'll include that later in the video where I go back and forth between, you know, a, a, a system that was running primarily on the micro SD card versus PlayStation, which is primarily running on my hard drive. Now, some cool things about this is, you know, now you can add more PSP games, Dreamcast games, and not be conflicted with running out of space. Um, the other thing, as I mentioned in my previous video, is that when the Raspberry 5 comes out and he can, you know, build on this image, you know, we can start getting a whole GameCube collection and maybe Wii games or Sega Saturn. And those systems will probably emulate just fine on the next iteration of the Raspberry Pi. So that's good. And as we get into these more complex systems, these big CD files are much, much larger. And you're going to want a two terabyte, three terabyte hard drive add-on. So um, overall, I'm digging it. Um, here's the game collection. Now let's go ahead and try out some of these games. Make sure they still work. So let's... So this was the comparison. So here's my PlayStation. Again, these are ROMs are my hard drive, my USB 3.0 hard drive. And then I'm going to skip over to PSP minis, which are still on my micro SD card. Just so you can see that the menu, it's marginal. You can't really tell the difference. Yeah. <laughs> 
So this is exactly what I did, is I deleted the 145 gigabytes that were on the SD card. That frees up space for more ROMs on the SD card, or I can throw ROMs on my USB 3.0. Um, so I'm using a Toshiba, but my setup looks similar, except you need a controller too. Um, so you wanna format it like I did. I use Pi EXT ROMs. I don't, I'm not sure if you need that or not, but I would just do it, why not? Um, then we ran the script. And then uh, we were able to, um, we, we networked in and got it that way. Um, this is his first bundle, 800 plus games. Uh, it was just shy of 300 gigabytes. So if you get like a one terabyte drive, you can add like a ton more Dreamcast games and PSP games. Um, here are the three scenarios. We did scenario three, where we had a 512 gigabyte SD card and we added a hard drive to it. So now we have 512 on an SD, plus however many gigabytes you have on your hard drive. Scenario one is if you have, a, so that would mean you have a one terabyte SD card. So I don't think anyone's gonna be using that scenario. Or you, or you took off, maybe you're like, oh, I hate Dreamcast. So you delete the whole Dreamcast folder and you replace it with more PlayStation games. You could do that too. Scenario two, I have an existing image on the hard drive. Yeah, so this is if you saw my other video where how to just get your um, your V-Man image to just boot straight off your hard drive. You might only have like a 32 gigabyte SD card and all your ROMs are contained on a hard drive. And that's really simple. You've already set up the external hard drive. I did a video about that. I'll post a link of that video in the description. A um, little update on that video. Some people say that they had to format their hard drive as a FAT32. I didn't do that but they're saying they had to. So you might have to format the hard drive before you hook it up to the image as a FAT32. I did XFAT, okay? Now for this video though, so that was the separate video for scenario two. Back to scenario three, remember in the instructions and when you watch this video, the hard drive actually needs to be NTSF. And definitely go with a USB 3.0 hard drive. It's much faster, much better, okay? Other than that, just follow the instructions. All right, so in conclusion, cool little script. I've actually pleasantly surprised how well the USB 3.0 hard drive is going to work. And I think for future builds, it's gonna be amazing. I know these pe people love these mega packs, right? Like two terabyte build, three terabyte build. So um, this is definitely going to promote that. And uh, so we'll see. I'm sure we're gonna find some interesting stuff. And uh, as computing gets better and emulators get better, everything's only gonna get better. So anyways, that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.